show, we're going to be looking at my dust extraction system at the business end, right here. Eventually, I'm going to remove this guy and I'm going to replace it with this guy down here. Now, this one pulls a whole lot more air than that one up there. I'm going to show you what I've done to mine to make it work in my particular situation. And also something really special about this end here. You really do want to see this if you're going to muck around with your dust extraction. See you soon. Dave here, how are you? Dave here, how are you? Today is the 5th of February 2023. Uh, Chris, one pug, one bulldog. Uh, they're both well, except for Pierre is down here snorting away. I'm down at the other end of the workshop because this is where the dust extractor is. This is, I thought it'd be so much easier just to bring this guy down here. This is the one that I'm working on doing some modifications to. And I thought you might be interested to see what's inside one of these. I've only opened up the front. I've never taken the impeller out. I've done that and I've always found it's a good idea to actually do something prior to showing you guys so I don't look so silly. Anyway, so I think that's what we might do. Now also, I've got a little bit of exciting stuff that we've done with this as well. I've made a, uh, an, a, an enhancement, a connection piece for it which is solving a whole lot of problems for me. And John Lafferty has been a big help in that process. The other thing is, not today, but during this week, I'm going to give away a pair of these. Now, if you want to get one, these are Bluetoothed uh, G6 iMuffs and they work brilliantly. I've been testing them. I've done a couple of little stupid posts on Instagram just to get a little bit of interest in them. These are George Pierre's. He's the guy who designed these. And there was just recently a very, very large hardware show in Las Vegas. Pierre, stop it. He's trying to drive me crazy. Anyway, he uh, won a, an award over there for best, best new item or something like that. So it's no small potatoes. George, just a guy in Australia, uh, decided he's a floor, wall and floor tiler. He's decided he needed something to make life better for him. That's why he designed eye muffs. And then from there, he's made them Bluetooth. Now the sound in these is fantastic. They're not noise cancelling. They have very, very good bass. But the thing is, they reduce the decibels coming in from outside. So they're legal. You can still wear them because they're not noise cancelling. If you've got on a building site that says you can't have noise cancelling gear, they just deaden the sound very, very well. They're as comfortable on the ear section as my Bose Quiet Comfort 30s. So that will give you an indication and the sound is possibly almost the same. And that's a huge wrap for George. Okay, now, this is what I'm going to do. During the week, I will start up a little competition. This will be international. And what will happen is I'll ask you a couple of questions and you'll get points for those, or not points, a certain amount of entries into this little competition. So it's, it's like I used to do these little competitions and, and giveaways. So we're doing a special one for George and George will post it out to the recipient who gets uh, drawn out of the hat. That's what we're going to do. So you'll have to answer questions to be able to get your name put in the hat. And then I'll do an automatic draw. So it's not me doing it at all. It will be an automated um, winner finder. There's plenty of programs on the, the internet that can do this. So I'll do that. And as I say, if you win, these are brilliant. 
fit very, very well. They're very comfortable. They don't pull down on the bridge of my nose. I can adjust that by moving the, the ear section clockwise or counterclockwise over my ear and that adjusts the tension back this way. They're so clever. What else is about them? The only thing that I said to George, maybe you should get some white marking on these buttons for old guys like me that forget which button's which so you can see quickly which is on and off. But he said to me, Dave, look, it's so easy. The one closest to you on your right ear, closest to the front to your eyes, that's the on-off button. You can um, answer phone calls, you can do the works. You know, it's, they're great. I love them. Anyway, I'll do that. Uh, I'll do a competition during the week. I'll throw it in the video description down the bottom. So keep on coming back. Check the links in the video description down the bottom to find the link for the comp. And I think we'll run it over a week or two. Yes, Steve, fog proof. They have ventilation in the bottom. Look, they're brilliant. I've been wearing them outside mowing the lawns. You know, it's been really humid here. So you'd reckon you'd fog up really big time with that. Hasn't happened. Great. Okay, George, there you go. That's a huge wrap for your eye muffs. Um, I, I don't get anything from it. I'm just letting you know that's a product that I've been using for years and years. And he's come out with a new one and I thought you guys might be interested. I don't get any, uh, there's no affiliation. I don't get anything um, in return for you guys buying them. Totally your call. If you want to get one, get one. I'm just letting you know they're a nice product. Okay, on to this fellow here. Now this dust extractor is replacing that one over there. Now, why am I doing that? Well, if you've been watching this show, you would have seen that a couple of weeks ago, I was going to do a video with the CNC and I ended up doing it. But before I did that, I, because the CNC runs the dust extractor for such a long time at once, so it runs for an hour, constant running. And these are only single phase units, they're not three phase, so they're not designed to basically go that long. Uh, well, and also because you'll notice on this one, I've mounted it vertical. So all of the weight of the uh, windings and everything inside, which is really heavy inside a motor, pushing down on the bearings. Now the bearings are not designed to have, they're not thrust race bearings. They're not, they're not designed to resist force downward. There is a bearing at either end of the motor for a horizontal situation. And that's how it can spin. It'll spin forever doing that. So, <clears throat> Hi, Dave from Fort Worth, Indiana. G'day, Bruce. Thank you. Can they fit over the glasses? Yes, they can. Look, <laughs> I'll just get these things squared away. You hold on to them from the side here, this part here. You pull it out. Don't reef them by the actual muff. So don't do it over your head and then down. You just go straight in, forwards. As I say, you can adjust pressure that way. There you go. They're sitting there really well. I'll model it down and underneath. My glasses are in behind it. The glasses aren't falling off. They're not going anywhere. The sides just tend to touch the glasses frame. I'm not feeling any discomfort. And as I say, I can move that around. I can wear a respirator as well. There you go. They're great. Has that answered all of your questions? <laughs> I'm hoping so. Um, and new deodorant. Look at this. I'm not sweating away like crazy in here. I noticed the last couple of shows put my arm up. Massive sweat marks. Much like Mark War had on uh, Fox uh, the other day with the Big Bash Cricket. All right, let's get into it. So why am I doing things with this? I'll bring it over so you can see. You might notice straight off that it's sitting as it would normally do on a base. But what's different? I'll tell you what's different, children. This is normally pointing straight up. I've managed to rotate this. Now, I was under the impression that you could only rotate this in thirds, like um, 120 degrees at a time because there was these 
big sections in the castings on the motor that looked like it was holding this on. Well, I was wrong. So what I've done, and I'm going to go in and undo it all and show you quickly inside. Phillips head screwdriver. Doesn't take long. Don't lose them. If you want to, here's a tip. Just get a pencil and put a mark on the body and also on there. You can see them. That's my, my lining up mark. Now, you'll find that all of these screws holes are perfect. But if you get one that isn't quite perfect, then what happens is your holes won't line up. So it's much like when someone replaces a drive shaft in your car. What they, or if they're taking the, the, the gearbox out, they take the drive shaft off and then, but they go in there with a white paint and they mark where the spline was meeting because that's where it's been balanced. Same kind of thing, but it's not balancing this. This is just holding it on. I should have really just whipped a few of these off, but I thought, you know, we've got plenty of time. It's only 10 minutes into the show. I had, <laughs> got the glasses on. I had an interesting thing yesterday. Vicky and I were up at uh, Pelican, which is near Newcastle for people that are in uh, New South Wales. And it's, it's on the lake. <laughs> it's just near Swansea. And uh, it's about three coats from there. We got there and I said to Vicky, right, well, I'm gonna duck over and fill up and fill up the, uh, the water. You know, you put a canopy up, it's a three meter by three meter canopy. And we've got these plastic water containers that you clamp around the legs, fill them up with water, and they, and they stop the canopy lifting when there's wind. Anyway, none of the taps were working, so there was a jetty there. So I zapped out the jetty, and I bend over and fill these up, these water containers in a little trolley, and there's eight of them in total. <laughs> these things, normally live there when I'm walking around. You guessed it. They fell off. I just watched them going down into the water. I thought, well, that stuffed it. Now, I have to be able to use a little um, card reading device and put in dollars and everything when people are buying what she's selling. <laughs> so I had to duck off to a chemist and buy some, um, buy some reading glasses so I could do that. Anyway, uh, <laughs> we're still doing this. Oh, don't, don't stuff the, the rubber gasket up. Okay, so we're going to put that to the side. Anyway, about an hour or two later, I see all these kids jumping off the jetty and swimming and having a ball. Anyway, I went over and asked the parents. I said, do you mind if I ask them if they can put some goggles on and go and have a look, see if they can find my glasses down? I think I know where they are. Because these are multi focals they're not a cheap animal at all <laughs> so the uh, the yeah yeah not a problem so the kids are all duck diving down dry. and it's a long way down they've got the jetty out there obviously right at the end of the jetty anyway couldn't find it so one of their dads and thank you so much he came out and he said i'll put my goggle on in he goes he does one load one trip around the thing and then a duck dive comes back up so there you go it was so, so good of him to do that. All right, so inside here we have the impeller. Now, the first thing we have to do is take off this cover. This is like a little domed washer that holds the... It, it can't actually touch. Let me see. As I pull it apart, you'll, you'll get to understand it better. But it is a left-hand thread. Very important. Don't try and tighten it up. By, don't try and loosen it by tightening it up. It's not going to work. It's a left-hand thread. So it's a uh, socket cap screw, and I think it's a 5 mil. Now, the other thing, while you're doing this, first thing, do not have it plugged in. Do not have it plugged in, whatever happens. Don't leave it so that you can't see the plug, because some idiot might skylark and plug it in, and you've got no idea. Or someone might be being helpful and plug it in. Next thing you know, this thing will say, you say goodbye to your hand. 
So whilst also you're while you're in there, none of this is really hand friendly. If you wanted to wear gloves, it would probably be an idea. So we're going to hold the impeller and it's as if we're going to be tight, tightening it. So I'm going to hold all the way down there and see that? That's as though I'm tightening it, but it's the left hand thread. So I'm actually loosening it. And I'll show you the little domed washer when I've got it out. Steve, um, ours are filled up with sand, don't need to fill up each time. Ah, but I don't want to carry the extra weight, Steve. See, I, that's, I'm, it'd be another 20 kilos that I'm carrying around. And we've got the car is pretty well laden up with a lot of the stuff for the markets. So it's, uh, it's not as though it's a truck or a ute, it's, it's just a, an SUV. So here we go. This is the domed nut, or domed washer, I should say, or domed retainer. And it's the left-hand thread on purpose because of the direction the impeller is going to turn. Good morning, Cole. So that I'll put to the side. And I say that is domed because when, it's, when you pull it up tight in here, it's actually going to be pulling up against this and keeping that force backwards. This is the end of the armature, or the, the, the center of it. So next thing we need to do is there are two grub screws in here and they are slightly smaller in diameter. So I think that's a four millimeter Allen key. So I shall loosen those. Now this is a little awkward while I'm working from this side. So I'm gonna bring the other camera around behind me and I'm a little bit closer so you might be able to see it. Let's see which camera. Yeah, that's working a little bit better. And I've got the door open because <laughs> the dogs, the dogs like to be able to look outside. I'm like what a life. They've got it hard, haven't they? Okay, so there it is on it. And I could use a spanner or a pair of pliers on it to give it more leverage. Let me bring this around closer this way, see if that's going to work any better for you. There you can see it's on the on the thing now. These are ordinary, like a right hand thread. So I'm going to push that direction and that's loosened it. They don't have to come off a long way. And there's another one on the other side. And I'm going to loosen that. And then I'm going to use a ball head style of Allen key because it's a whole lot easier once you've got it loosened off to do a few rotations with the ball head style and around to the other side. Okay, now that might start working off. Uh, I think I might need to turn that just a little bit more with this one first. My hands are probably in the way so you can't really see what's going on. So Steve, how is it going with um, with the men's sheds when you're going to markets and things like that? Is it is it still going well for you, for everyone there? Now, what I'm going to do is just slowly pull it out. And it is such a very, very close fit. It actually touches. So I have to pull it out very, very carefully without cutting myself. Now inside, I can put my hand down on the inside there and I can push the impeller from the inside as well, which I'm going to, I'm going to force it out that way, that way. There we go. So there's the impeller and it has a keyway and the back is really well done. There's, it looks like they've put the tiniest uh, balancing uh, trick here. That, that's drilled out a little bit, I think. They've drilled a little bit just to balance it. 
But it, this one turns really smoothly. I was very surprised how well it turns. So there we go, that's what's there. Now, why have we done that? This is the part that I, as soon as I saw that, I thought, hallelujah. Four bolts, 17 millimeter hex heads that bolt this on, which means I can rotate it 90 degrees at a time. So I can have it pointing out sideways, I can have it pointing directly up or back the other way. And that made me really, really happy. Yet yeah, the gear puller is called David. <laughs> so there you go. There's the keyway in there still. I'm gonna put it back together and then we'll have a look at the next thing. First of all, I'll jump onto the chat and have a quick, quick chat there, go to the other camera. So what do you think? Th these things have always been a little bit of a mystery to me. I've, I've no, I know that that's in there. Like you can see that just looking in this end when you build the thing. But I've, I've always been curious about how to actually take the impeller out and what was in behind there and whether I could make it suit my situation. Now, the reason I've turned that is because I'm going to be mounting this impeller or this unit up there on a shelf this way. You notice the one that's up there already is mounted to the wall and it's directly the in, input is directly over the cyclone. So this is all sideways and not great for it because all of the weight of the motor, the insides of the motor, the windings are pushing down on those bearings. And as I said, they're not designed to be a thrust race. A thrust race is designed specifically to be able to resist lateral force as well as spinning. These guys aren't. <laughs> so there we go. I'm gonna have a quick read. You know, filled up with sand, cold morning. David Yanis, how are you? Rod dismantled my brand new one of these to fix up all the dust leaks a couple of weeks ago. It leaked more dust <laughs> than it put into the bag. All, all going well, but uh, don't do too many markets anymore. Steve, that's a shame. Markets are great. The Pelican market that I was at yesterday, there was a men's shed there. And I said to him, you know, I do a bit of work for Carbon Tech. I said, do you, do you go down there and shop at all? Never heard of them. And I thought, man, oh man, that's a shame. I said, look, every now and then we'll do tea and bickies and things and put on a function of some sort. I might do something about Veritas hand planes or whatever. You guys interested? Oh, yeah. So I got in touch with the rep and he's going to contact them. So they were selling dog bowls and dog bowls in, you know, how oh, we made that one with the water dispenser for Pierre and for Nessie. Similar thing, but it was just, it was, they, they, <laughs> I was listening to them, they were bragging about where they were finding pallets and timber being thrown out from people's homes out the street. And they stop, grab it all, throw it in their boot and take it back to the men's shed. And they turned, turned it into these little stands that hold two dog bowls, one for water, one for food, and stops the dogs tipping them over. I know Pierre, he's a shocker with water if it's a hot day. He grabs the bowl and flicks it and tips it all over the place and lies down the water to cool off. He wouldn't be able to do it with that. Um, whatever you do, don't loosen the keyway. No. Uh, I had mine apart a number of times for various reasons. Bruce, uh, Dave, tape the keyway to the shaft to keep from losing it. That's exactly right. 15% uh, dis discount on men's sheds. I told him that 15% discount on men's sheds and men's sheds members individually get 10%. So well, it's a no brainer, it really helps. John, hi Dave from Yorba, Linda, California. Love the show. Thanks, John. All right. The keyway is still there. I have not rotated the motor. The key is sitting in nicely. Mostly keys are kind of held in with a, just the tiniest little bit of grease. When I assemble something, not these things, when I do other mechanical work, I always put a tiny little bit of grease on the key to make it sit in the keyway so it doesn't fall out. So that's my, that's my tip. The, what the other guys are saying as well is, is great. All right, now we've got to get the rotten thing back in. Now that I've done show and tell, we're going to put it back in. So it's a little bit easier to see. There's the grub screw on one side and the keyway there as well. I'm going to line it up and slide it in. I'm actually going to get down here. I'm, I'm not going to move the camera. I'm going to line it up by looking straight in. Yep. 
and then slowly, slowly push it in and put my hand down on the inside and feel for the keyway. Yep, it's all, all there still. I'm looking in there. I'm gonna use a block of wood to tap it. Not hard, I'm not gonna use a hammer. I don't wanna damage anything in there. I've got a chunk of hardwood here. I'm just gonna give it a small tap. So I'm gonna watch the side here. I'll turn it around a bit more so you can see what's going on. All right, here we go. She's going in, see that? So I was watching the fan, the, 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 the fins on the fan as it's going. Oh, here's another interesting thing. You would think it would turn this direction, but it turns the other way. It blows the air and the centrifugal force off the end of the impeller is what's forcing the air out that way. If it went the other way, it'd pull the air in. <laughs> okay, quick read. Um, Jason, hi Dave, I th I'm thinking of making the inlet 150 to run six inch main line. Thoughts? This is a six inch inlet on this particular dust extractor. That one up there is a five inch inlet and I made it into a six inch inlet by using a flared piece of six inch PVC. There was a men's shed that was doing it for auto blast gates, the guys from autoblastgates.com.au. And that's where I got it from. I made a plywood ring. Have a look through this video that I did on the six inch dust ex extraction. Not the late, latest one, the, the, that was just a quick tour. But the one where I do the whole thing and show you all the way through it. Because that's what I did to that one. And it does work, it does make it better, but my outlet was restricted still down to five inch. And that's something else we're gonna talk about in just a minute. Let me get this in. Don't get ahead of me too far. Good on you, Jason, but uh, patience. <laughs> this is gonna make a little bit of noise. That's in, all the way. Notice I did not use any steel, like a hammer or anything in there. I could have used a brass swedge and put it in there and just tapped it in with a hammer on the brass. That would be fine. But you do not want to flare anything in there because it'll be a bugger to get it off further down the track if you have to. All right, now that I'm in that far, I'm going to, I'm also going to tap it on the side because I, one of the things this is going to do is when I put it in, I'll spin this around a bit more this way. When I put this on, it's going to pull on here like a wheel puller in reverse. It's going to push the impeller back all the way to the seat of the back of the um, armature, I think. So that's the next thing we're going to do. We can do, because it's basically a thread is a wedge. Did you know that? You probably all did. Now I'm going to, as if I'm tightening it, I'm going clock, no, counterclockwise to tighten it because remember it's a left hand thread. Okay, five millimeters. Put this guy in here. And tightening it. And it's tightening. Is the other end of this guy. I'm going to put it in, and I don't want to keep my fingers down here because if I slip off, my knuckles are gonna go straight onto those. And see, look what happens to you old people. I was gardening for crying out loud, pulling some grass out from around one of the gardenias here and just bumped, didn't scratch or anything. I pulled my arm out and I said to Vicky, what the hell's going on here? She said, yeah, welcome to the club. <laughs> okay, so still tightening and tightening. Beautiful, that's it. That is nice and tight. So that now will have pushed the impeller back down past the outside of the am armature uh, shaft. Next thing to do is to tighten up those grub screws. Remember, we've got that little four mil guy here. And remember, it's so important. Okay. Doing these grub screws up is extremely important as well. So you get, just get it started with the long section because it's easier to get in there okay so I'm, I'm using this part I'll finish off with this part 
I'll rotate it around to the other side. I could just get that dome head run there, but it's just in that little bit too far for me. Okay, now, tight. That's tight. And around to the other side. And I'm going to go to the other side again because you never can tell. If you get distracted, you, may, you might have gone one full rotation. <coughs> no, that, I got the right one. And have missed one, and one would be loose, and that would be bad. Now, remember what I said about this. The reason this is now this direction is because it's going to go straight out the wall. See this one? It's five inch hose, big kind of sweep around it and going out the wall and has a bathroom style flap. You know, you can get those bathroom uh, fans and on the outside they've got, got these little flaps that open up when you turn it on. Well, that's what that has. Don't like it. So I'm showing you what I'm going to do. All right, next thing, next thing, next thing. Here is this. Now, I don't have any straight blade machines anymore. I used to have a jointer with straight blades. Uh, everything that I do now has got small chip coming from it. So the uh, jointer and the thickness planer are helical heads with individual cutters. The saw doesn't take any large chips, it's dust. The router, spinning so fast, it takes dust as well. The capex, it's hooked up to this system as well, and also the CNC. None of those things, now that I've said that, one does. <laughs> but anyway, none of those things, uh, sorry, it's, it's not going to affect it. Uh, are going to block this. Now, this is a safety grill, so when you've got this on here, you can't put your hand in there. And it also is designed to protect the impeller, the, all of the blades on the impeller. So if you get something, like if you cut something on a table saw and a big chunk of wood goes through for whatever reason, through your dust system, or maybe you're sucking things up off the floor, I mean, you might have a hose and a hose sweep, floor sweep, and you're picking stuff off the floor. Well, you don't want big stuff flying in here. So that's there for a purpose. It was a trend a while back for people to cut these out when they had straight blade jointers and thickness planers that, you know, 15, 20 inch wide. And you can imagine all these ribbons going down and Well, mine's going through the cyclone first before it even gets to the impeller. So not a good idea to get rid of these. I'm gonna find that pencil mark which is right there. And the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put screws in into and get them started. And the, the gasket is going to act as basically a bit of a nut to hold the screw in place. See that? I'm going to do that so that I don't have to muck around as I'm putting it back together to pull the gasket back into the right position. Do the next one. Takes a little time, but that's okay. Ah, oh, you remember last week I made the uh, mobile base for Vicky for her fermenters. I made another one during the week because she's got more than she's got quite a substantial little business going. Um, anyway, Paul, uh, one of the one of the guys that watches the show bought some vodka off her the other week and he got back to me and he said, Dave, it's just... Now, that doesn't worry me because I got the door open. He says, it's just so nice. <laughs> yep. I said, I know. I know. So I told her and I put a big smile on her face. You know what it's like when, when you make something for someone and they appreciate it. It's the same thing like when you're doing woodwork. It, uh, it's always nice to get a little bit of recognition. Uh, and we've got 110 watching. What? 112? I can't believe it. Man, oh man, there's so many people wanting to do this. Wait for I've still got the best is yet to come on this show. Because 
I want to show you what I've made. And it's just been a game changer for me. This, this is bet between me and John. I did some drawings, photographed the drawings, sent them down to John. John did some stuff for me in Fusion 360 because he's a hell of a lot better than I am at it. I could have done it, but you know, I'd be there for a month of Sundays. Anyway, I, um, I got things into play yesterday afternoon when we got back from Pelican and uh, up over the moon, over the moon. But it, it, it was wrong. <laughs> That's why it's a prototype and it's very enjoyable to get things you know, to nearly there and you just fine tune. Okay, so now I have all of the screws in place. See that? They're all held in place by that rubber flange. It's a good idea to do that. I'm going to go down and wave my arm in front of that thing down there. There we go. That's just spotted me. And remember, I've got that pencil mark here, and I need to line it up with that pencil mark there. Perfect. And I'm going to hold that just in position without pushing too much on it. Beautiful. See how easy that is when you engage the screwdriver. Anyway, it, uh, it's going on perfectly. And the, the, um, the rubber gasket isn't damaged at all from doing it this way. I'm not swearing at it. <laughs> All right, this is the last one, so I'm going to do this one all the way up. I've got the clutch set to seven on the little drill here. So it's a little bit, a little bit more than halfway. It's got 12 settings on the, on the torque, on the clutch. There we go, that's all done. So now it is back together. When I make the base over there, the shelf for the impeller to sit on, this unit down here, and I'll just get it off there for a second. This unit here will be bolted to the base first. Now, why am I gonna bolt it to the base first? It's a hell of a lot easier to do that, because it's very light in comparison to holding the whole bloody motor up there. You go, oh, and then you get to a point where you can't go anymore and you think, I'm stuck and there's no one else here to help me. So if you're on your own in a shed, plan things out in front before you do anything crazy. Uh, Peter, hello from Hobart. How are you, Peter? Dean, uh, hello from Lee, L-E-I. Where is Lee, L-E-I? Whereabouts is that? Okay, John. CXS, yes, indeed. Now, the other thing, now that I've done that, the impeller section is now at 90 degrees. See the mount for this? This would have been down at the bottom because it's actually spot welded onto this guy. So I will also be making a vertical section on the shelf that I'll bolt this to. It doesn't need to be you know, substantial. All of the weight and everything is being held by that bottom plate. This is just so, you know, it's a thanks for coming mount. <laughs> it really is not going to do a lot. Okay, now the part, the part that has got David all of a dither, all excited, is this. I 3D printed it. How cool is that? You know what this is going to do? There. What do you think? It is a beautiful transition from that rectangle to six inch. G'day Rodney. 
I should be less astonished. Excellent. Now, I'll get a bit of six inch. This is six inch stormwater PVC. Or it's, its external diameter is 160 millimeters or 161. This, most PVC is the same external diameter. DWF PVC pipe, which is drainage waste, uh, no, DWV, drainage waste vent. That's what they can use for sewer connections and all that kind of stuff. All it has is a thicker wall, but the external diameter is still the same. So all of the fittings that are, are male to female or, or, or the female fitting, the stormwater and the DWV will all work with each other. That's the male end. Of course, that doesn't work. The female end will. There we go. Straight on. Now, I'm leading up to some more exciting news. That print, by the way, 18 hours. What do you think about that? It's just beautiful. And John said to me, Dave, because he, he printed one at the same time. He said, Dave, I printed mine in blue and you printed mine in yours in yellow. You know, this is yellow box shed color. Well, it's not actually. His is a little bit darker. I got this for DeWalt stuff because it's the same color as my DeWalt here. Uh, remember, not long ago, we were going to make some um, an LR32 track follower and toggle things for the LR32 system. This is for Festool stuff using the DeWalt trimmer. And uh, it's a little bit sad because the gentleman who was doing it with me and died. You know, you, we just, we, I was talking to people on the show the other day, the Patreon meeting after it. And I said, you know, we, if it wasn't for the internet, we would never have met each other. You know, it's, it's not like hot date or whatever, plenty of fish or whatever it is, <laughs> dating service, but people with like interests, we would not have met each other. And you develop some very good, strong friendships around the world. And I, I'm just so thankful that I have this medium to be able to do what I do here. And a lot of you, I, I feel as though you're close friends. So if you see me somewhere, say hi. You know, I probably won't, won't recognize you because I don't see you, you see me. But uh, and I'm more than happy to say good day and shake your hand and chat. Anyway, this guy here. This is a female fitting. You watch this. Whoop! Other way up. David might work better. It's a tight. It's a tight fitting, but nonetheless, it will go in. Believe me, it was in this morning. I think maybe it was a little warmer this morning. There we go. And down. There you go. What do you think? So this is going to go straight out the wall. And that's the next thing we're going to do as well. And once it's outside the wall, I don't want water coming back in and into this. So I will be putting a 45 degree turn down on the other side of the wall. This piece of pipe here is going to be long enough for me to adjust where this particular guy is going to be sitting on the shelf because I'm going to be connecting this via six inch flexible hose. From here, it'll do a 90 degree, but it's a long sweep to the top of the cyclone over there. So it will be hooking in here. All right, now, next thing. But what do you think? What do you think? Gotta make some comment about that. That's so cool. John spent ages. I was up at Pelican in between selling vodka. I was, <laughs> I was sending messages to John. So, right, well, we need to do this. It's got to do that and the other. And notice there's only four holes. There's six, oh, there's nine, 12. Uh, three, six, seven, eight holes in this one. So, so 
He's already done a new design that's got those holes and it's slightly larger. All good. Okay. Also going to do one that can be the male section for six inch hose to go straight onto. And I am thinking about putting these on my Etsy site if you're interested. I've got a few people who have been chatting to me about it and saying, Dave, I, I want to do something like that. The files, yes, I'll sell the files. I don't think I'll sell that particular one. It's really bulky and I don't, I'll oh, stuff it. Yeah, I'll sell them in Australia and I'll post them out in Australia, but it's gonna be, you know, maybe $15 postage or something, but I love it. So this is for this one. I think the fitting, the, the I'll do another one for the FM300, which is the same as the DC-1200P. And also I think that's the same as the one that Heron Forbes sell. And I think it's the same as the one that Grizzly sell. So, yes, print to order. And I'll possibly, I don't know if I'll do them in different colors or not, but I think, I think it's great. And the other thing about having that 45 degree turn down is that at the moment, this one doesn't. And this is the valley down behind me and there's a ridge up on the next. And I've turned this on, <laughs> got, got the car, drove around to the other side of the valley and up on the ridge. And it's like someone's playing a trumpet. It's just echoes across the valley. So this one going straight into the bush next to me and turned down. So it's going to, the sound waves are going to hit the ground and into the bush and dissipate. So it'll be nice and quiet. Uh, we'll have to talk about that at a later date. I may wish you, uh, <laughs> make one for me. Yep, look, as I say, it's an 18 hour print. They're not going to be cheap. They're not going to be cheap, but you know, it's, it's a fantastic fitting. I think they will work brilliantly. And also, John's done it in a way where we can change the parameters around a little bit. So he's very, very clever. And as I said, we'll, we'll put them on my site and we'll see what can happen. See, see if anyone's interested. Now, the next thing I want to do, and we've got, got 15 minutes left. The walls in here are soft sheet um, soft cement sheet. They're about four and a half to five millimeters thick. I did that, but it's it, for two reasons. It was cheap. There's studs in behind every 450, 450 millimeters, 18 inches. I know where the studs are. It's very easy to locate those. For things like this, these up here, I'll either go into the studs or I'll put French cleats up on the wall. I wanted I was thinking about doing plywood and I thought, you know, it's got a lot of money uh, and it might warp a little bit because there's moisture down here. I'm down in the bush. Uh, I wanted to be able to paint it white to get a lot of reflective light in here. And it's very bright. It's not too dark. I love it. But because it's very thin, if I try to cut through it, I run the risk of fracturing it and breaking the sheet. So what I'm going to do is we'll set the camera up onto this one. I'm going to, going to cut a circle in this melamine. First of all, I'll bring it over here. I'm going to use Arthur's bench. Bring this camera over to here and up a little higher and down and then switch the cameras. Um, Rodney Hot in Brisbane, Damien will sell the pot. Yes, uh, Chris, cool idea. Um, Chris, no mate, just blue. Bruce, Dave, how about adding hardware cloth to cover the end outside? Not cheap anymore. Okay, so I have other things there. You can get one inch or half inch square mesh. And what you do is you cut it into a circle. And we'll do that further down the track. Cut it into a circle and you push it in so that as you push it in, it's like a, a lobster trap. You know how lobsters, it's a nice big opening at the middle. They go in and they fall in and they can't get back out again. They don't know how to get back out. Same thing with this. I'm going to make the circle on the, that mesh, which will probably be maybe two millimeter diameter steel in the mesh. Um, I'll make that so that it's just slightly larger than that circle and you push it in and it, it, uh, it, it kind of becomes concave as you push it in. 
and it's hard to push it back out again. And that will stop possums. Because <laughs> believe me, possums love to go hiding in things like that. And I'd hate for a possum to move into there and then all of a sudden I turn the impeller on and we have diced possum going everywhere outside. So I will be doing all sorts of things like that. The other thing is, I don't know if it needs to have a flap for uh, keeping the place cool or, or warm or whatever. It's basically to shed weather and aim sound waves down at the ground. I could put a 90 degree in, but I'm re then I'm starting to restrict the airflow more than I'm wanting to. 45 will be fine. There's very, very little restriction there. Okay, I need to put a circle there. So what are we going to use for that? This piece of pipe, of course. I'll take this back out. It's a good fit. How good is that? So good. All right, just the circle. There, I've done all of the, uh, the details as far as where it's got to go. Um, I've written the top, top up there. Uh, I've written the distance in that I'm going to come to the edge of the circle. Up here, I've written stud, and it's the center line of the stud. And over on here, I've got the same thing. I've written the center line of the stud there. The distance down I want to be to the edge of the circle and basically where it's going to be sitting. And you know what, my friends, that's it right there. So I'm going to hold that down and hopefully there's enough lead in this pencil. Oop, I moved, didn't I? Cool. There we go. That's what I've got to cut out that. So I'll take it back over to the bench and put it in the vise. Spin this guy around this way. And drop this down. All right. Now, why am I doing this? Well, I'm going, I want this to be a reinforcer. So I've got a stud. I'll be putting screws into the stud there and down here. And this plate is going to have construction adhesive put on the back. And when it's pushed on up against the fibro or the AC sheet, it will stiffen it. And so when I'm putting the pipe through, it's not going to ruin it. Let's just go into here. Done. Get the jigsaw out. And a blade. Hmm. I'm going to go with a heavy blade. Also, with the jigsaw, always make sure no battery while you're putting the blade in. It's a no-brainer, but... Yeah. We'll rotate that. And now that's locked in. And... Check it's working. Yep. I don't know if you can see that. So the blade looks like a stationary. Give me a second, we'll start it up again. Just slow it down a little bit. Hmm. Ordinarily it does. <laughs> I'm going to put the eye muffs on. Come back a little further and up. I still love my displays up here. This, this Turner display was so much fun to make. And Ian Kerry came down, and you know how crazy he is about Turner hand planes. He's the one who gave me the bike, the rotter. Anyway, he, he nearly died when he saw this. <laughs> okay, these guys straight on.
Beautiful. All right, I'm just going to do a kind of a neat cut. I don't use the dust extraction with this one. I steer the thing by the back. I don't steer by trying to force it at the front because it's just going to end up in tears. I'm going to come around the other side. I'm going to have my back to you for a minute. Because I'm going to run into the vise. Just lift it up a bit. I could have done that in the first place, couldn't I? <laughs> I should have just rotated it. Not the way. I've got it on automatic as well, so it just starts and then when it gets low, it, it speeds up to accommodate it. Check, see if it fits. Little tight. Uh, give me a second. What do we got? They're not going to do it, David. What about the next drawer? Um, I was pretty sure that I had one of those there. I've got that. No. Ah, that one might work. Okay. I got a semicircular file. Let's just see, see how it goes. Let's have a look, see if that's made much of a difference. Yep, there it goes, in. I'm going to open that up a little bit more, but that you've got the idea of what's going to happen. Take that out. And I'll do this as well. Just to finish tidying it up. Don't you love 3D printers? Look at all of that. Uh, where are we? Here. This one. Now that's 
going to make it easier for me to find out where the tight spots are. There's a little bit there, a little bit there, there's a spot there, and a spot there, and a spot there. All done. All done. Back to this, back to this one. I could use the bob and sander, Steve, but not everyone has the bob and sander. So I've, every now and then I try and do shows where I use what I guess a lot of people have. Jigsaw, a um, trimmer, and a drill. That's all I've used on the show today. To undo the screws, I used the drill, drill as a screwdriver. It was all a circle cutting jig would be easier, definitely. But as I was just saying, that's, that's why I've done it like this today. I could take it over to the bobbin sand and just do that final tidy up. And I probably will after the show because that's cheating. I don't want you to see me cheating while I'm doing it. <laughs> um, uh, have a look after it. Okay. Horizontal would be, yeah. Uh, uh, a bit awkward cutting vertically. Yes, David. But, you know, it's a vice. And if some people don't have anything other than a vice to hold, same reason. You can do it. Um, Okay, so got it here in the end. C <laughs> Damien, of course, the CNC is the absolute easiest. Again, not everyone has one. John, you got here in the end, eh? Excellent. All right, now don't forget, keep your eyes open for the IMAFs competition. And uh, basically, it's, it's a giveaway from George, not from me. I will just be running it. I'll pick someone at random. But the more entries you put in, the better your chance is, definitely. Next week, next week. What are we going to do next week? I don't know. Well, hopefully I'll, I'll put the, I'll have that all done. That'd be cool. I might focus on doing that during the week. Get that out of the way. But I think that's it for today. All right. We'll have the Patreon meeting in a couple of minutes. And as I always say, look after yourselves, be nice to each other. And before I go, hold on a second, hold on, hold on. I think I have a piece of paper here with some important stuff on it. I think, I think, give me a sec. Maybe not, maybe not. No, I don't, I don't. What a shame. Oh, well, next week. I'll find that piece of paper next week. As I say, look after yourselves, be nice to each other, and I shall see you all next week.